Trent Vigo, welcome to an edition of Scoreboard here at ACTN Television. It's always a pleasure every Tuesday evening when we come into your homes to talk something on sports. Although you know sports in Trent Tobago is not really, there's nothing exciting in sports right now, but we will try tonight to, well, with my two guests, it's going to be exciting. Let me just tell you that. When the two people on set, it's going to be exciting. Tonight we're going to talk generally sports, you know, what's happening, cricket, you know, football, you know, all the little issues that is happening in sports. Um, let me first of all um, introduce to you uh, the CEO of Rep 868, Dennis Allen. Dennis, hey. it, it's a pleasure. How are you doing? How are you doing? And the sidekick. Christopher yeah, Gill. Sidekick. Thank you. Hi. Good. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's always you a pleasure. Promotion? I got promotion. <laughs> yeah, Sidekick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, boy. It's always a pleasure. Always nice always to be here. Always, you always know, nice and, to be um, here. I always what are we jumping in with? I always appreciate all the guys passing the um, <laughs> Kenny River to come down south and, you know, talk sports. George, yeah. you'll be so hateful. Right, I am a man right from the, south. Right on yeah. the top. Yeah. Top, top. On top, the San top. Fernando Hill. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're top, 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 top. Fernando Hill. We only had to make our two step on the top. Let's start with cricket. Why not? <clears throat> we had hope <laughs> when we go won ahead, the first test. Mm -hmm. But hope then fail. Right. I feel I feel there's words in there, but go ahead, George. <laughs> hope fail. Submit and hope was really our this. trump card right. because of how successful he was. So what we need to do is recruit somebody named Prayer. Well, <laughs> because now we would have our hope and faith. <laughs> but generally, and you then, know, let, 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 dream let, coming let, in let, to let's batter around this number whole, six. This whole scenario about um, this West Indies tour, it was not beneficial to us in no way. Uh, 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 you know, I, you know, know what? I love cricket, I, right? I don't disagree. I don't I disagree with what that. I think, you, I think what, it was uh, beneficial for us. What, I think what, it was what? beneficial for World Cricket. And was it a West Indies team or was it a Barbadian team? First of all, it was a Barbadian team because, you know what, I, all the Barbadians feel that me, we, but I nothing. I mean, I, I joke it. Barbados are joking. Yeah. Um, because, you know, um, the, the tour itself isn't finished. You know, we have one days to play, we have our uh, T20s to play. I think the objective of the tour mm. by the English Cricket Board was to generate funds. For uh, them? And, and, and I'm hoping that out of the generation of funds that the West Indies does get some kind of thing. Uh, the other thing is, I think for the West Indies in particular, it's a good model um, so they can look at all the systems, the nuances of how things took place to run the CPL. Yeah, and hopefully the CPL will make some money for West Indies cricket. Whether or not that happens, I don't know, but I'm just hoping. Yeah, but Chris, we're talking in 2020. We still have one of the most elite level teams in world sport, right? Talking about they need to go England for a model. What is that? Come yeah, on, man, you could Google that. It's on YouTube that I you know could Google, Google that. it, but Google don't work in your here, thing. Go here, ahead. Here, here my thing, all right? Hey. The, the new West Indies that we're seeing is an inheritance from the old Dave Cameron era, but it, it has some overlays. So we have new players, we have new um, management, new coach. Yeah, new coach. New executive, but some of the same old bad habits. Chris touched on it. We still have that regionalism, talking about there's a Bajan team versus there's a Trini team. Obviously. Listen, if there's a team, there's a team. It, it are no scrubs on the West Indies team. There is no reason why we should not perform at the best mm -hmm. each game. And do we see that? No. I think um, Holder, when you give him the ball, he performs well. He's a, he's a, a talented bowler. Is he a great leader? I don't think he has that, that gear in him. So what we're seeing is a, a, a deficit in some of the areas that the infighting, the regionalism that is prevalent at the board level, at all the different regional board levels, we're seeing that affecting the team. Filtering because down. what else could it be? You but know what I, I mean? I will add to that that I think this is not the first time that the team has gone into a test series, won the first test, lost the last two. We, we did it in India or we did it in a couple of places where we did the one. So the team is showing signs of life. Um, but what T is alluding to, the other thing that T is alluding to, the, so the insularity is still an issue. The other thing that T is alluding to, I think, um, is that we still don't have in each territory system or a proper um, development program that we are developing our, our players 
to that higher level. So it's, mm. it's better than it was 10 years ago, mm. but it's still short of world standards, what England might be doing or Australia might be doing or New Zealand might be doing. So we still, we still play you know, catch up. You know, we hear about that development thing and, and we know it's a system yeah. that develops consistency. Mm. We don't have that. What we do have is an abundance of raw talent. And what you see on the pitch right there is raw talent without adequate top class um, opportunities to perform. If we play in cricket 40, 50 times a year, right? We, that's plenty of cricket for a, a Trinidadian or a, a Bajan or a Jamaican. Compare that to what the uh, Australians, they play in top class cricket way more often than we are. Yeah. You understand? Because they're, they're exposed to more top class competition, they are going to get better. You're not, you, it, it, you can box in a net whole day, whole day. It's under pressure, the mental change that takes yeah, place you know, in, in, in a, a match real, scenario yeah. against somebody who, who bowl in 100 miles per hour or 96 miles per hour. People, we're still, still talking about people who bowl in 90 and they're that good. 90? The difference between a 90 mile per hour and a 96 mile per hour bowl is maybe three or four million dollars a year. A classic example of that is Jofra Archer. While he was here, he was struggling to make an under 19 West, 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 West Indies team. What somebody didn't realize was, you know, like what I always say, are we into long-term development of our athlete? And obviously, that boat was missed with Jofra Archer. Now he's turning out to be a bowler that is menacing yeah. on all levels. Why we didn't develop that? So what happened is Jofra Archer was a um, diamond in the rough. England took him, saw what, saw what, what it was and took their time to develop him into what he is. Because I heard Hula talking after the, 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 the end of the game that um, we need a, is an academy we use, but some performance center, right? He's right. Now, he said because he benefited from that, and that is no more, right? We were leading cricket for decades, yeah. right? We had the best fast bowlers, right? Now, you, let's go to... India, India are better fast bowlers than us right now. <laughs> Very much right? so. Yeah. So, <laughs> somewhere along the line, we have lost something that the greats and them had set up for us from years ago. But you see, they didn't set up. We had a bunch of great athletes that were performing, that came out, that we were lucky to have. Raw talent then. A lot of raw talent that came out. But these, when people talk about Malcolm Marshall and Andy Roberts and some of these guys, Besides having the raw talent, they played quite a lot in England. They played quite yeah, a lot okay, in Australia. Just about to say that. Yeah. And so they developed that skill. So that was sort of stymied by, by policies of English cricket board and Australian cricket board, maybe the travel and a number of things. So now, a lot of the talent that we develop here does not get that chance to play as often abroad or in the conditions or in English conditions. Or so we, we, we need to develop a performance academy so that we bring up our standard itself and that we have a continual development. Like what they're saying, we need that continual stream so that we keep going. Otherwise, we will get inconsistent performance and inconsistent in a, a squad that's good maybe now and then 10 years down the road is bad and then it's good or five years down the road is, you know, we might win a test match here and then lose three and that's how it go. Anyway, test cricket is dead. I, I, they have said it. I don't need to explain more than that. Yeah, test cricket as a yeah, format yeah, is dead. Yeah, so you're, you're, basic, you're, you're still the answer, me, you know. Basin, we, we was it a beneficial tour? Uh, well, this is what I'm not going to say. So basing this conversation on what we did in a test cricket scenario, yeah. I think it's a waste of time. West Indies is never going to be a test cricket playing top nation ever again in our history. It's just... Just forget it. We don't have that gear. More of our players are seeing the big money wine yeah. in, in CPL, IPL, and more of our players are getting those contracts. Why would you even consider playing Test? Yeah. It makes no sense. It's, if if you could be driving a Range Rover, yes, right, will be driving by twenties, blue. I want right? blue. I want a you. Blue you one. in your twenties and you driving a Range Rover. Your mother living in a, a, a board house somewhere in Kwaito, Kwaito, but you driving a Range Rover to park in front of that board house. Why? Because you could hit a ball really far or you could spin a ball real fast. For four and, hours. For, and, and all you need to do is four hours. Why are you even bothering to stand up in the stand for five days? It <laughs> makes no sense. Yeah, but you I, understand I, where I'm coming I, from? I, from a money yeah, point but of we, view. But, but with the question is, we just stand up in the stand for three days, eh? 
<laughs> it's so good. <laughs> but coming to that, the other thing that we, you know, as we're talking about cricket, we have the CPL tournament coming up. Um, so questions. I like that's like way back. I know. Yeah. We need to be, we need to Peanut find out. Yeah, 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 we need, we need to find out whether or not yeah. the CPL tournament is going to benefit us, Trinidad and Tobago. It's well, happening here. Are we going to be benefit from that? I would and say another, zero. No, I would say zero. None. none, none. And, and, so then why keep it? That's the next good question. That's a good question. Especially with the virus around. We can't have no crowd. No crowd. I mean, you know, you know, I don't even have a problem with that because that is a reality for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Um, MotoGP, Formula One, NBA, everybody have the same problems. Mm. But you know what those places have? Look, this weekend, um, Fabio Quattararo won the MotoGP um, race, second on a trot, right? Mm. What is happening with him? He is being sponsored by Petronas and by Sepang Circuit. Those are products. When you, when you see him win, you see two products being pitched at you. What is our product? We spend all this money to bring cricket here, and what is the product? We don't have a tourism product. Yeah, we can't right? sell that. We don't have a Even tourism product. Even if we had product. it, we couldn't sell it, because right now nobody can visit nowhere. I'm curious about what are we selling? Why is the reason? Are we benefiting? Is there economic? No, before, you, you might have said, well, you know, you're getting crowds coming in, getting people coming in from other countries. Hotels are going to be filled. People are going to spend money. They're going to do plenty of things. That, not, no. That's not happening. You're, you're going to offer employment to people. Right. To get, even if it's temporary. To sell something. Sell a pack of nuts, or, 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 or a corn soup outside, yeah. something. So that's not right. happening. T ticket scalpers. Don't tell the, don't, right. respect. Don't tell the man at the gate who will be tearing ticket. He out of a job. Yeah. And, and, so and then the other it? question becomes, how much of the... Is it that there's a, such a large... TV audience now because nobody can go anywhere. Is there such a large TV audience that India is buying CPL cricket, which I have no problem with? If that's the case, how much of that TV revenue is the government of Trinidad and Tobago or the Trinidad and Tobago Cricket Board, by extension, or those two people getting? We will is it never 1%, know. 3%, 9%, 20%? What is it? We will never know because the commercial arrangement is secret. The television arrangements are secret. None of these things are, uh, are yeah. public knowledge. But do you think at this point in time, if it wasn't done before, more so now because of the current situation, to make us a little comfortable to accept it? We should know that, to know what the country we should is know everything from, we, from, from, from this whole CPA? We should. We should definitely know it. If, I, if, if anything at all that should have come out of this arrangement is we should have had a better, a better understanding of what we have for sale. What is Trinidad and Tobago selling? Because mm. that is what it is. It comes, it comes down to the only benefit that we can derive is the, the advertising benefit. Excuse me. So what are we selling as our brand Trinidad and Tobago? Yeah. Right? First Investment of all. Investment in Trinidad and Tobago manufacturing. Are we selling our tourist product? Are we selling that? If not, are we gaining money from the, the, the TV rights? How much? If not, what else do we sell? Are we allow? Is it is it a, a avenue that we, the CPL or whoever else is guaranteeing that 50 Trinidad athletes or cricketers are getting scholarships in a foreign land. Well, I'm just going on and on yeah. with different things. Are, the, are we getting any of these things? And the, the other part about it is when we put out this money for CPL, is it taxpayers' money that we're putting out? And if so... So who has money if you're putting out? <laughs> I, I'm asking. And how much? And why? And, and then if it is that, is there a Freedom of Information Act that we can see how much money you're putting out? Because if we are putting out 6 million or 12 million or 20 million for the CPL, my estimation is, okay, if you're putting out 20 million, I want back some of that. I do find that we should just be putting out 20 million to save CPL because CPL in our, in our jam. We, I, I think it's yeah, yeah, sport, we sport. Were we buying it in a contract to have CPL for a number of years? I, Chris Gill, don't know because, because nobody, knows. If nobody case, knows. Because if that is the case, CPL could have go to an, an, another country. And why I say that too? Should I go Barbados? There's a crying in the public scenario right now about people outside who wants to come home. And they right? can't come home. And they can't come home. But we bring in 90 people here plus it's staff. 90? Well, if you take 15 by, by six teams, that is 90 players. Right. And then the staff might be another five, so that's 120. Plus the TV crew. Plus the TV crew will be at least 30. Right. So that's 150. I would say close to about 180 people will be bringing in. Maybe more than that. Let me say 200. I say 300. 
and then we're going to have to secure their friends and family. We have to secure them, and we have to make sure they all thing. And, right. And and right. so I, I, again, I, I and yeah, but you know what? We bringing them to where a hotel that we don't know the commercial arrangements about. So we don't know how much money Trinidad and Tobago is going to make, make from money. hosting yeah, them yeah, yeah, yeah. at our hotel that we own. How much of a percentage? You understand? Because so, when you look at it, we come in at a loss because we already lost the gate receipts. We have a trough right? so we of Trinidad and Tobago dollars mm -hmm. that we have too many hogs fighting to feed off of. Nobody trying to build an extra. Nobody trying to find a next source or a next money vine that we could put a next trough and say, hey, or they could feed there, we could feed there. Everybody want to, and the trough is shrinking. Yeah. The trough is shrinking. COVID, I, I, I think I've heard something like $3 billion worth of um, COVID relief and all these different things um, that would have taken place in the, the period of time that since the start of the year that we've had this COVID-19 yeah. virus dealing Which seems with. a reasonable figure, to right? be quite honest. Where it come from? We didn't have money before that. Well, I want, to, I want to jump in with that. If we can be doing all of this, then all this tight belt, belt what I was talking tighten about. Tighten the belt. Tighten the belt. My belt gets tighter. Was that a rumor? Because the country seemed to have a lot of money. Money spending. Exactly. Money spending. And I don't... Or we, do, or we run in the CPL on credit. I don't disagree that you have well, to we invest... we the CPL. You, you have to invest in things and prime the pump and get things moving. I don't have a problem with that. But what is the policy behind it? Sports, tourism, those are not things that are easy wins. We don't have a sport product. We don't have a tourism product. We have national athletes abroad. Rhea Thomas was talking. Um, Asa Guevara was talking. And they're all saying, listen, we running, we, we, we still competing on money that we won last year. Yeah, before. You understand? Yeah. Right now, Rhea Thomas, I mean, enough respect, I'm not going to talk the girl business, but it's been in the newspaper. What is how she making money? How she living? It's tough. It really you tough. understand? And then I think the, the the other thing before we go to break is that you have a, a a ministry of sport that as of yet, and like I have told you, have yet to come out and say these are the policies by which sporting organizations can hold. We could just drop that right there with, with seconds to go. We're gonna talk about it. You gotta come back with that. Right? We gotta come, come back with that. And, and if you, uh, you know, timing. all these all these sporting, <laughs> you, you, you start a stutter yeah. by George. Yeah, because your stutter. Your timing makes me up there. Right, because we that, that topic, you think you're, 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 we're gonna take a whole segment for that. <laughs> we, viewers, we're gonna take a break because you see that well, Chris start that we can't start. When we come back, seconds. when we come up from the break, we'll continue. So, viewers, we're taking a break, we'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back, viewers, to Scoreboard. If you're now joining us, I have. Dennis Allen and Christopher Gill. Are we just discussing sports in general, whatever is happening in sports at this present time? Before the break, Chris, you started a topic there that you need I'll, more I'll time. I'll restart the topic for you. The that? Ministry of yes. Sport yeah. has of yet put out any, as far as I see, audible and visual and or printed policy as to how sporting organizations in Trinidad should deal with the COVID in terms of carrying on sport. In fact, what the Ministry of Sport has done, even though they have people they pay in and employ, they have turned around and asked federations to submit their policies for running events in the light of COVID, even though these sporting organizations mostly have volunteers and people who don't earn a living through sport, which not, I, not, I, I think I, is absurd. A big part with the problem of top-down leadership, right? Is that is you, you have to settle? You have to sell the policy. <laughs> so right now, sports, tourism, uh, those we're not seeing those policies. And there was something being discussed dealing with anywhere. sports tourism was supposed to be laid before Parliament or something like that. What, what, what was it? It laid it, yeah, it laid in our grave. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing with cannabis. <laughs> we're waiting on that joint select, yeah, yeah. select, select it, it, committee, right? Mm. Listen, the, the fact is, just now, Chris, I just wanted to make a quick point here. We seeing the national federations being led by their global federations. So there is a global federation position from world athletics, uh, volleyball, and, uh, for instance. But what, what we see in is the pickup mm -hmm. from the national federation and how the, because all of the venues mm -hmm. are, are, are owned by the state. 
Yeah. So who is going to be responsible for things like sanita sanitization in between events? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. For instance, the, the World Athletics guidelines stipulate that fans enter the, the, the venue at a different place from the athletes. The athletes cannot mingle with the fans until they've completed their full slate of events. If you, if you ever went to a, a track and field meet in Trinidad, you know that that is virtually impossible. Right? Because the family, the, the friends, the, the everybody mingles together where the team sits. Right? So how is this kid, let's say it's, it's a juvenile event, how is this kid going to get a lunch? Yeah. How, how is this kid going to get, it just, it's impractical. Yeah, it's so it. there needs to be a layer of intervention from, from the Ministry of Sport to say, well, okay, we've interpreted what these global federation guidelines are, and this is what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. We're not seeing that. So Chris Gill FC is going to play George Mattison FC down in point 14. Mm -hmm. Who's securing the ground? Who's securing it bio, in terms of bi a biological security? Who is doing that? Who, is, is, who are you leaving in charge of that process? The fans come in for my team and the fans come in for George's team. Who are we? Who is making sure that those fans are all wearing their mask or, or they're all doing practicing social distancing when they do arrive? Mm -hmm. Who is doing all of that? Are you leaving that, that level of, that important duty to Chris Gill FC's management team? Because Chris Gill FC management team is two people who might, you know what I mean? We, we, we really have normal jobs and we're really just helping out our football team. And yeah. George Matheson team might have one coach and an next person. That is who you're leaving that, 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 that serious thing there, to? There's the a Ministry meme. of Sport joking. There's a meme, George. Um, they, they, you can't clean a school toilet, but you can sanitize the school, you know? So the fact is, you're putting health and security into the hands of people, as Chris said, unpaid professionals, right? People who have no policy governing them, but mm. people who have bad habits going back decades. Yeah. Trinidadians don't like to wash their hands. If you watch people, like, you can could, you could zoom in on my, my fingernails. No, you can't see that? No, no, right. zoom my in fingernails anything. clean. Why? Because I like to see my clean fingernails. If you walk around town, just watch people hand. No, they, I, I, people don't see. even know how to wash hand. We had to teach a whole generation of people how to wash your hand properly. And it's, some of them still don't do it properly. And think about what they're saying. World Athletics has sent down a policy to deal with COVID. So the entries might have a policy to deal with COVID. They have then passed that on to each club. If two clubs are having a meet, who is there? How is the Ministry of Sport sure that those clubs are doing what is supposed to be done? They, 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 they need to, um, the minister and or sport company and or both of them need to get up and start doing what they should have been doing. I think they have lapsed. And we're not hearing comments coming from people that I would like to see coming from. Maybe some of them jumping up in the political fray, so they're trying to keep quiet at this point. But they really need to open their mouth and say, no, enough is enough. Step up. You need to step up. Sorry, Shamfa, you need to step up. Uh, and, know, and, I like, and I like her. But know, she still does need to step up. And another part of it, too, is how it ties in into what we were talking about before, the sport tourism aspect, right? Obviously, the borders are closed. Obviously, nothing is happening. So you would have had meets that would have been national championships. We would have had people coming in because it's a, the, the, the most affordable place to come to have official timing, run on a mondo track. These are the, the kinds of things that would have attracted athletes from Antigua, um, from uh, Barbados, from other islands, that they would come here so they can benefit from that expertise. Right. We don't have that position of leadership at this point because everything is locked down. Rightfully so, in my opinion, right? But you're still seeing, excuse me, people coming in through the borders. The borders are still porous, so there's still a high level of exposure, right? Or an, a, a, an unreasonable, unreasonable and unacceptable level of exposure for me, right? So we're seeing that even the things that we do get right and properly well-funded, Ministry of National Security, uh, the Coast Guard, the Army, these are people with, with thousands of professionals working every single day, 24-hour shifts, and we're still not getting it right. So you can imagine with sport, where it's only the Ministry of Sport and only two or three federations that have paid officials, paid secretariat. 
what are we saying? The minute sport opens back, we're going to face real serious problems. Yeah, yeah. And real then, serious and, and, when you say, what are some of the problems that you, that you feel that we're going to face? Spread. 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 It's, it's going to be spread. We, because, just on Chris, look, look at what's happening with primary school. Primary school sports, secondary school sports, those two are the two biggest pockets of athletes in the country. When you go at juvenile sports event, 300, 400 little kids, yeah. they're running around, hugging up each other, talking, hold it, hold it, hold it. So we that's know. community spread How right are you there. going to manage that? Are we managing it? Are we, you know, the, the SSFL might not come off. If it does come off, how is it going to come off? Because but you notice the guidelines, the, the man say, they're suggesting that you don't train. They didn't say it's our official policy, stop training. If yeah. this was NC, N, NCAA, the NCAA sent out a memo, and, and five minutes after the memo sent, they, they have people checking but to make sure. If you could host the CPL, then why can't we host the secondary school football league? I would rather. Nah, mm -hmm. I think it's harder to, to maintain that. You see people going into a bubble, into a, what, what, let's use the yeah. word that everybody is using, the a bubble. bubble. A bio right? bubble. But, so, so when they get into the bubble, they, they can track where you're going. If you will have a, a thousand kids playing football so about, across what, what, three what, what, different... What about the Ascension League that is planning to open football just now? They're going to put them in a... Uh, unless the, the players are going to be what, in the What about that league, Chris? What about that league, what, George? The, listen, that, that that's going to be an interesting thing. experiment for me. That yeah? league is exactly. going to be a... Uh, it's going to be one of two things. Unless they are in a bubble, and all the players are in a bubble for that period of time of the league, if they are not, yeah, it's, but that, it's that, going that, to be that, a community it's, spread. It's, it's four divisions, from, eh? it, Remember, it's the, the top division. It's four it's different a, it's divisions a, yeah, of yeah, football. Yeah, yeah. In plus, the pl pl plus, plus, they said that um, the zones are going to run tournaments, which they will pay for it. Exactly. Right? So yeah. you're looking at a couple hundred people. You're talking about hundreds of people who yeah. going back home to their family and stopping on the way to buy a double, so go and buy a thing, a pack juice, whatever the case may be. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. no. Uh, in, my, in my mind, that is a very... Dangerous model. You're looking for yeah, yeah, yeah. community spread. Yeah, you're but, just looking but, to test yeah, it. But people will still say, okay, you bring in the CPL. You're gonna have people going back home to their family locally. No, but you see, the thing mm. with the CPL I don't know is if that's different. What's gonna happen, I huh? don't think it, what what people might. Even though I don't agree with the CPL coming here, the CPL might have enough <clears> resources <throat> to keep their entire 300 people mm. in a bio bubble. And when that time is up, put them on a plane, send 90% because it's only the Trinidadians might stay back. Me, who knows? Maybe they might not. And send them back to their country so they have contained the spread. Okay. If there was okay. a spread, okay. it's contained. The problem with Ascension or any league that we have here is we are not or do not have the resources to create a bio bubble for an Ascension league. Yeah, because like CPL, they're in the same hotel. They could travel on the same buses, the same maxis, whatever. They get to the event, right, they could sanitize, right? So, like, if you look at what's happening with MotoGP, in between sessions, so you have free practice, you have your qualifying yeah. sessions, you have your, your, your um, race sessions. In between each session, the whole venue is sanitized. Right. Right? So, they have different guidelines with who can get in. So, you have a, a phone, you have an app on your phone that tells you, okay, how many days since you last got tested. Yeah. Right? So if you don't have a, a green um, scan code on your phone, you can't get in the venue. Right? So the layers of protocols, if you look at what's happening with schools in China, those layers of protocols are not being applied in China. So I don't have the confidence that we can just trust each other to, to maintain those yeah. high levels of protocols to manage this risk. It just, to me, it's looking like we setting ourselves up but, for but, but, a huge but collapse. In spite of all of that now, when you pass in any community, you see yeah, a couple we, dozen youths. We're not football. using masks. We're not, we're we're not, not keeping not, social we're, distancing. We're, we're not keeping social distancing. And we're a number of playing things. playing football. We, we're on the beach. You, you, you understand? Yeah. So do you think right now that sports has been crippled altogether in terms of Oh, for the next nine months? Oh, for sure. Yeah. For at least the next nine months. We, we, we are not... There are some sports that might be able to be played or at least continue in some form or fashion, but then there are other sports that you can see where it is more difficult. Uh, you have a sport like badminton. 
you might be able to you might be able to close off a badminton thing and have a few players come in they might be able to play indoors it's a few players they might be able to deal with that maybe tennis because the area where they're playing is small and they might we might say okay we only have in tennis tournaments on the public courts and that's it and it, when you come here, we're going to check here and whatever. So you might be able to do stuff like that with some sports. But with other sports, you can see where the difficulty lies. Um, and, and, and so what we need to work out is how are we going to, how are, what is the plan? What is the plan? What is the plan moving forward? What, uh, no, what is that, any plan? Remember, not, no, remember not continue something. here, but how can the English League and the Spanish League run football? Uh, we can't do money, it. money, resources, resources. I was now about to jump in with that, M right? Money, so, resources. like, I, you know, he touched on badminton, and I agree. Badminton, you know, you could space out the courts a little more. You could instruct the the the, um, the officials to put on masks. You could have people with masks off the you court. Could group people. You could have things because you could spread it out, mm -hmm. right? Okay, cool, no problem. Where do you get any money for all of that? Yeah, even right? that. Where do you get any money? Where do you get any money to sanitize? So unless the ministry comes in and says, "This is what we are going to do to support these additional things that we know you cannot do because you was asking for money to do your normal thing last month," it ain't going to change nothing. Nothing except it's going to increase your cost burden. Right now, right? the ministry on Ablai, the ministry happy they had to spend a cent on sport. Me you know where that money going? That is all that ministry of sport is happy. You know what, boy? No sport ain't taking place here. Yeah, no sport ain't taking place here, yeah, but we ain't gonna spend no money. That is what the ministry of sport in right now. The ministry of sport needs to take a leadership role. A and role that not. they have abdicated for this period of time. You have not heard of official position. That's true, you know. Right? Yeah, right. That, yeah, role, yeah. that role is critical in how we will resume to get back to normal. Yeah. Right? So if you have um, tennis, table tennis, uh, badminton, any racket sport, those things could be managed, right? They don't have a million people coming every weekend. So, you know, it's the same maybe 200 people who will, who will be directly affected. It's easier to manage. But when those people go back out to school in September, how are you going to manage the contact tracing? What's happening, if you, and I'm going back to MotoGP, I'm a huge MotoGP fan, but what I've been looking at is how they've put systems in place, which is very different from how um, the NBA and MLB have put things into yeah. place. And cycling, for instance, cycling, they just had a, a, a three people this morning, um, yesterday, sorry, um, the, the news just bust, three people in, in one race get um, tested positive, positive for, for coronavirus. coronavirus. So what is going to happen? Those three people, the contact tracing going back, do we have the resources for that? Yeah, yeah. No, not even with the, the uh, Ministry of National Security who, and the Ministry of Health who are doing the contact tracing for the normal, if you call it that, COVID cases. Putting things into a mix where you have the nation's elite athletes is just irresponsible if you don't add that layer of organization, funding, planning, and policy. None of those things are in place. We yeah. don't have the money. We don't have a policy to direct us. And we don't have people to do those things. Yeah. So forget it. The because NBA, the NBA is up. running in Disney. Yeah. One guy step out the NBA. He said he was going to his stepfather funeral or something like that. Stop off by a, a strip club on the way back. Never they, know, man. You need to pick they, up some leads. Right? Yeah, he said he needed wings. He went yeah. to look for wings in his strip club. Yeah, right? I don't know if he's seen angels <laughs> in yeah. the strip club. Comes back to the NBA. They say, yo, you, you know how they knew? One, they, they, were, they kept checking his Facebook and other things, and they had his phone traced for movement. And they say, yo, you stopped here. And he had to admit, and basically now they have isolated him for the next week and a half while they will keep testing him to make sure that he doesn't have. How are we, we so even that simple thing, we're not doing that. What they did, they took all the NBA teams and put them in Disney. So now they have created a biosecure bubble. Mm -hmm. But again, that calls for resources, that calls for uh, 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 infrastructure. when they started to lift certain things, restrictions, right? mainly for sports. I would have thought that on one of the press briefing, you would have had somebody from the ministry Chamfer, Chamfer. coming in now and putting in the two cent pieces as what they are going to do to, to, to handle sports, right? But 
even with the with the with the court with the CPL, they really haven't. Besides no spectators, they really haven't come out openly and and identify what how their protocols okay, are going to be. What is our part in it? Exactly, what? because it's obviously going to have local media want to go and and and, um, and cover the games. So they have not even come out and give a good explanation. As to I know this what CPL starts eight days after the election. Eight days after, so it starts the Tuesday. So after it, it, it started in the and same the, period so the, when the after win celebrations right? go. It going starts on. two days before the proposed SEA exam. Right. Why? Could, got, could they not have put all these things off? Because what, what, what so, I'm looking at... So you have, a, you, have a, you have a bunch of school kids come out, they get in contact with somebody, he get in contact with somebody, a player contact he, and next thing the whole CPL, all the school children infected. What is the policy? What, where's the divisions? Where's the layers of protection? As T is saying, what's the policy? What's the plan? No plan, as usual. We're just winging it. Um, yeah. If you look at all the successful, well, I shouldn't say successful. If you look at all the leaders with people who have been um, having low community spread and, and low impact from COVID-19, what you've seen is a layer of technology that has been applied with policy, strong policy position. We don't have that. Who you thought we need to take a break? Viewers will be right back after the short break. <laughs> Welcome back, viewers. Welcome back to Scoreboard on ACTN. Dennis, you wanted to mention, you were about to mention about the kids. Yeah, I college you, kids. Yeah, yeah, I know you're passionate about, so, about that aspect. So yeah. a lot of these youth, um, they estimate uh, about 140 of them, right? Um, they have a, a web chat. They have a, a WhatsApp chat that they, they talk to each other every day and a big part of it was how they're going to go back to the USA to take back up their scholarships. Now, there were some other issues as well. The position that the uh, Trump government had basically said that they, um, they're going to, if you don't have 90%, um, if you have less than 10% um, online classes, then you, you can't come back into the USA with your F1 visa. So those were things that by and large have been sorted out, but the problem was getting these kids back up to the USA. So, um, when are they due, or when were well, they supposed to be? Well, school's supposed to start back. Some of them should have been back already, right? Um, so, Caribbean Airlines has instituted a, a flight that is gonna take Trinidad and Tobago Nationals back to Miami from where they can now spread wherever they have to go to in the States. The problem is that some of these cities that those children are going to go back on, into have major COVID issues. Yeah. So we, this, this is an existential threat to Trinidad and Tobago and Caribbean because we're not the only Caribbean country with this problem. So yes, I would like to see these kids get back to their scholarship opportunities, but these are our future Olympians, so it's a kind of mixed thing. Yeah. But I still have to say enough respect to Carl on this. Mm -hmm. Caribbean Airlines have done the right thing, and they've put together this um, flight to get kids back up to the States. It, it's a real problem. Because Is that something the ministry could have gotten involved in, too? Um, I think it was just not enough urgency. I think yeah. not enough people at the I'd right levels were pushing that. it. But I think it's happening. So, you know, it's happening. It's happening on time for most of them. Some of them may be a few days late. Let's just see what's up. Yesterday was the deadline for submitting your interest to get on the flight. So okay. hopefully all 140 plus of these children will get on that flight and get back to their opportunities if they decide that that is something that they want to do. Yeah. Yeah. We, really have a, we really have some issues that, we, um, that are maybe beyond our control. But at the same time, I think if there is some uh, leadership by those who have the resources. And right now, the truth of the matter is in most cases in Trinidad and Tobago, it's really just a few big businesses and the government that has the resources to do anything. Mm -hmm. if, you know, the power, both from a monetary point of view and from a, a manpower point of view to get things done. Other than that, you know, you just have people kind of, you know, we, we sort of wafting along at this point in terms of where, where are we uh, businesses Businesses are even, not even sure whether they're going to open or they close, or it, so it's it, it's a little tough. So that's hard. That's really hard. No, I know. Um, I know you're eager to 
Ah, Iga, go ahead. To touch on the subject of the... TTFA? The, the, the TTFA. Oh, God! And all the issues that surround you. The first My thing, first question is to you. Eh. Is that... Are you, how disappointed are you in William Wallace? William Wallace need to call one of them Indian people that there's advertised on TV6. The, the, you know, Puja, the, man? Yeah, the, the Puja or whoever it is. You need to call them and say, I'm, I'm, sorry. I'm, yeah, I'm William. First of all, um, my loved ones have um, left me. Uh, Keith is one name, Keith. <laughs> and another name, Ramesh. And uh, I don't know if you could bring any of them back and an executive, <laughs> because they all left me and I, I heartbroken. <laughs> yeah, and um, they, they take money with them. <laughs> you know, <laughs> <and> <laughs> he, he, he make it sound a little funny, yeah? but the reality is yeah. the, only, the, the only cheese that stand alone without a big guaranteed contract from the um, TTFA yeah. is the man who signed all the contracts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. William Wallace is looking like a clown, yeah, right? Yeah. It's just unfortunate, but I'd called it. I had said very early, if you could, viewers will be able to watch back the tapes that we were here. Mm. We had expressed our doubts about his ability to lead, right? Yeah. So right now what we see is... But why is it so difficult for him here and for the SSFL it was... Maybe the, maybe, maybe, maybe we need to dig up in, in the, the SSFL, SSFL too. And, and That's what I'm saying. And, and what, what has come to light, which is really, uh, and for my very more than very disappointing now, is even though, uh, and I've had, you know, you know, jolly conversations with Mr. Emil Krong. Good morning, Mr. Krong. Um, it seems as if the FIFA weren't so crazy in saying, hey, you know, I think we need to jump in here because maybe they had an insight into all these deals long before we did. You know, now that they yeah, have come you know, to all life. the files that we get, mm -hmm. maybe they had that before. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, that makes sense to me. Yeah, now that yeah. it has come to light, you, you keep going, huh? What? Come on, let's just do a quick um, run through. Avec deal. Nonsense. Maddest deal you would ever hear. We're Nonsense. paying $10 million for $5 million with a free. Good. Makes no, no sense. sense. And, and Gapo, it's guaranteed. And, and, and Gapo said, how much jerseys we sell. Like, right? if we just buy jerseys. Yeah. You know, actually, Manchester United, we will buy that. If, 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 it's, a, if it's a team that could win, yeah, well, we could you're, buy that. Yeah. Which segues into Terry's contract. Now, Terry, I like Terry. I, like, I think he can add value to it. I the think way, he will way, bring the national team The up. way the, the conversation went about how he get our contract have me real concerned. Yeah, but Terry, yeah. come on, call on. Yeah, I got... 10, maybe 15 grand and then, borrow. And then think about... <laughs> borrow for a week or two. Call me, you'll get back. For sure, for sure. And think about it. You, you know, here's Wallace saying he signed the contract, but... He didn't read it through. He didn't read it through. That in itself says to me, why... And you then didn't... you are a teacher, so how are you teaching children? Teaching oh. what? <laughs> why teaching? Teaching them how not to sign our contract? How not to do, do business? You think, do you think it's an oversight, a genuine mistake? No, yeah, I think it's many. a failure of leadership. Once again, we have these problems. These people, these who we go put problems. We don't have quality leadership in sport, right? We can name maybe two or three sports that have really intellectual, bright, proven professionals at the top. And oh. I will say Ephraim Serrat is one such person. Right? Quality leadership is really a tough sell here in Trinidad. And like what T is saying, we, we, we like look at the football situation has brought to light first of all the whole consti the, the whole constitutionality of FIFA or uh, not FIFA sorry of the TTFA. TTFA is the current constitutional setup of TTFA good? Do we need to dismantle it and but, form a? And, but they and just do a reform. No, That's they the need problem. to throw that no, But when you say when you say that. He did nothing wrong. When I say he did nothing wrong. When you look back at the TTFA from Jack Warner to Tim John Key, William, to John, to Tim Key, to, to Wallace, is the norm. Everybody, all of them. I agree. You, you, you so, let's it, just, so it look like TTFA he, have he, their own standard. Standard. Maybe the only one of those four that, well, now nah, I can't say Tim Key could have make a deal, right? <laughs> but certainly Wallace, I don't think he's done anything that's illegal, mm. right? Ultra varies the constitution, certainly. 
Yeah. Ultra very is the board opinion. Certainly. Certainly. But illegal, he ain't gonna make no yeah, jail. Really. He gonna sleep every night with Elasco fan on tree, full blast, with, a, <laughs> with two pillow hugging up. So I have no problem saying that the man is not a crook. Yeah, yeah. No, but his yeah. leadership was too pliant. He had too many outside sources that were not the record. The only sources that were supposed to be making um, any kind of uh, inputs into any contract yeah. was the board. Or and that is not yeah, what happened. Yeah, yeah. And, and you, you look at the contract with um, the AVEC deal and how many things change. You know, he is saying, well, he thing and this come back and he write this. It just sounds so suspicious. You know, you're reading through it and then you read about the Arima Velodrome planned <laughs> fiasco. fiasco of which was, you know, Alice in Wonderland type business. <laughs> the adventure. mayor said, what? Huh? And, yeah, they and, came, but you know, we tell them go and, to cabinet and you, with you us. You gotta start to think about where, what was, what was going on, because you know, Brent, Brent uh, made the point that when he Sanko. Sancho, when he was told about the deal, and he got the chance to actually review it, he asked them, "This, you all not serious?" You know what I mean? But quick question: How do you all? What's your thought on how did Sportsmax get all this information? <laughs> <laughs> whoever it is, I don't know. I'm glad for them. <laughs> whoever, it is, whoever it is that send that information did the right thing. Yeah. No, but listen, we need whistleblowers. We clearly, do. clearly. Because this is what's happening right through. I mean. And you see, the bigger part of it, before you go on, you know why we need this? How much government taxpayers' money goes into football every year? Plenty. Yeah, that, yeah, that's a Plenty. lot. Eh? That's a lot. Plenty. We cannot have 10 million, 20 million government dollars going into football and we don't know what's going on. But that has been going on for years. I and mean, you know money has been pumping into, into, into football mm -hmm. and where has our football gone? Besides our World Cup in 2006. We still playing and, small goal. And we fall still playing Greece. small goal all over the place. Y yes, and? Right. What, are, what, what do we have to credit Million, million, money, spend, money, yeah. million spend, million spend. Million spend. Where's the brand? Where's I, the brand I, I right met now? I Clayton Morris in the gas station, Clayton. Good afternoon. And me and Emma were having a hearty laugh in between the serious topic of, boy, things rough. There's no development. Um, and there's no system. And, and we have seen a number of, of presidents pass. And then when you, you know, these deals were got exposed, and now you're, you're, your question after, your first question you're asking yourself is, I wonder how many bad deals they had in the last administration, and he won before that, and he won before that. I don't know if you all know that Ferguson and the Essential League has taken over the Pro League now, right? Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. And, and you know what? We need, a, we, we need to have some kind of difference into what will happening. Because, you know, the truth of the matter is the systems that we've had or we've tried have failed. Do you all think that somebody completely outside of football should have taken over the leadership role in the TTFA? I think we needed our businessman to take over. Business, it's, it's, see, it's business. At that at that point, it's because like I was talking just the now. The general secretary will run the affairs of the football. You put a businessman to run the over, overall business because football is a business. Yeah, but you before see, you go, before you talk football, the organisation has to run the run as a business. Yeah, but think of how we vote, business. Think of how we vote these guys into office. We have our Eastern. FA and a central yeah. FA and a northern FA and they have to have a vote mm. and then them voting for a thing. And they're blocking for the friend and, and they're blocking, blocking for, for the, the friend and things say nah, we know he, want, nah, nah. he. Yeah. You see Tay, Tay too good looking, we can't put Tay as president and all this kind of, you see George, George like too much South footballers, we ain't want he, yeah. right? All that kind of nonsense. And if you feel we're joking about the quality of that kind of conversation, we are not. Just far off. Yeah, yeah we, I know, I know. Yeah, you understand? Yeah. We are not. So, so we have this we lack need... of professional leadership yeah. in sports that are million dollars annually, right? That have a lot of potential upside. If we get a football product working well, we're talking about um, 30,000 people in the stadium, right? We saw Three some, or four times the, a I year. Think the, I think the closest we ever come to something like that was in 89. Closest. Well, 89, and what did we build off of from 89? Nothing. Absolutely look at nothing. The, we get in 2006, and when we come back here, we fall even further. Look at the, look at the, the, the composition of that team in 89. Who were those players, and what teams were they playing from? Yeah, look right? At. So when you look at, let's say, look at Spain in the World Cup and, and how they've, they've built their team, a lot of those players would have come from Barcelona, Real. Right? So those are the core of the teams. When we look back, what is the core 
of, of what team. we are building. In, 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 um, in, in Holland, you have a lot of the Ajax players. Ajax, right? Annoyed. Right. In, in Germany, you have a lot of the Borussia. You have a lot of the, the, the Bayern, Bayern Munich. Munich. You mm. have a lot of those core. So even still, you would see the core of the team presenting itself. One style of football, one style of commitment, coming from a professional winning background. We don't have that. No, we so don't. what we're trying to do is to throw money at a problem. Throw money, throw money. And the money is nothing. I could throw a $100 bill, it weighs the exact same thing as a $5 bill. Right? So throwing the money at a problem makes absolutely no difference. And you have to have policy, you have to have systems, yeah. you have to have a, 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 a contingency plan. And we don't see that. Here's so one people of the like that Wallace, just now, yeah. people like Wallace are not the problem itself. They're the, the product of a system, system. that is flawed. Yeah. Yeah. So we will always keep yeah. throwing up. Yeah. We're expecting a, 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 a space and we keep throwing up these jacks. So think about this for like a second. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's what's happened. They, 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 the sport company actually brought like people here once, some years ago, um, to talk about sport policy and stuff like that. And the, the person sat down in a meeting and said, well, listen, you all are funding all these sports. What's the problem? Just tell them what you want them to do. Give them a constitution. Tell them here we're going on. This is the constitution you got to work with now. Not that old thing. Basketball is a classic example oh, of a constitution. No, that's like three or four shows. That's still a sport. That's, a, that's, that's a sport. still a sport. It's a good question you ask. Is it still a sport in Trinidad? So we are funding these dysfunctional sporting organizations still. No. Here's three templates of constitutions. Choose one. But unless you choose one, you get no funding from us. Taxpayers' money cannot be going down that avenue. Organize yourself and organize quick. But we don't do that. And we still, when, it, when the problems come back to haunt us, we're still talking as if we don't have an option. No, we do have an option. We have many options. It might be, seem a little high-handed, but you know what? After the first year, all them who had little ego issues and things, they'll realize, all right, you know what? Step aside. It's for the better. Because we, are, we have made no progress. We keep regressing in terms of sport policy, sport administration, um, the standard that our sport administrators want to adhere to keeps seem, seems to be getting lower and lower rather than higher and higher. But you know what, though? I always come back to this. What is the product? Right? Yeah. So, George, you go out to events. How many times you're the only camera there? How many times I'm the only camera there? True. You understand? And, and, and that's a regular thing. Yeah? That's regular. regular. So you do your, you're still doing your Saturday morning sports wrap-up show, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. So people don't understand how hard that is to get that content there. You had to be driving around, or driving up, up yeah, and down, so up and down, up and down. You had to look. Right? And that is just one man, mm. right? So if you look, if you are a true sports fan, you look on the internet. Look and see what the, the, the mainstream um, television stations have been doing. Look and see what has been presented as our sport product here in Trinidad, right? And Tobago, right? Tobago is a little different, but that's a different conversation. We have not developed enough of a sport product. We have not developed enough of a sports management, regardless of how much work Brian Lewis and the rest of the team at TTOC, they've done the, the, all of the things that they can do. But when those people leave their, that, that Saturday morning thing, with their certificate. Chris did a, 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 a sports um, periodization training and yes, thing the other yes. day. The TTOC right? is really trying to get upgrade coaches. How much of that you're going to see? Yeah. Because, you understand? How make, much? Again, you, you, read, you open a newspaper, um, six of the sports stories are local, the other 20 are... AP. For, AP. 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 Um, you, you get on your television, some of the highlights, the rest of, you know, uh, what's the investment? And um, do, we, do we have a national sport policy? Is that sport policy meant to bring better, healthier kids to, to light, mm. cut um, insurance costs 20 years down the road, cut hospital bills, re you know, reduce the rate of obesity? There's no aim. There's no end product for any of these things. So, you know what? We if we get sports right, though, George? Yeah. It will be a huge, huge, yeah. huge if, push. If, if we do, if. if we apply our knowledge, our, our natural, intuitive creativity, because that's a Trini, that's a Trini genetic trait. Mm. If we could do that, yeah, yeah. it would be huge, man. My pause just raised there, boy, yeah, Chris, yeah, boy. Yeah, yeah, your pause raised, your pause raised. We don't have much time again. Chris, your closing remarks. Uh, I would love to see the Ministry of Sport step up 
and lead the way with COVID policy relating to sporting events taking place. Um, the, the reality of it is that between now and maybe nine months from now, COVID will be here and we have to find a way best as possible without risking everybody's life to coexist with it in a sporting man. We need sports, it is an outlet, and we need to figure out a way to get things done. Dennis. People are gonna be knocking on your door within the next few days. Ask them, what is your sports policy? What, and if they say, um, um, um. Don't vote for them. Make it happen. You have to push for what you want. I wanna see proper sports policy, regardless of whether it's PNM, UNC, whoever inside there, could be Duke. Could be Duke. Could be Duke. Yeah, could be. You know, could, could, be, could, 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 could be Queen Duke. What's up? Hey, TT Game Plan, Facebook, Internet, everywhere. Just check it out. We love your support. Thank you very much for the opportunity, yeah. George. I really appreciate you, the, uh, guy. I really audience. appreciate you. Guy. George, and, we always love coming down here. And viewers, you're going to be seeing some of the Rep A68 videos on our Saturday Sports Edition, so look out for that. We run out of time. We want to let you know that if you miss any part of the program tomorrow at 1, there's a repeat. And catch us next week, um, Tuesday. We're gonna have some. Who knows? Might have these same guys back home. <laughs> have a yeah, yeah right, true man. Y'all have a, Yo, best have week a good ahead. evening, people. Yeah.